Are you proud to have a conversation? Ladies, would you like to have a conversation today? Literally never. Why can't we talk about sterilizing kids? He's got nothing. The Salem Church in Doylestown, Pennsylvania hosted a Rainbow Room event, which is something that Planned Parenthood puts on for LGBTQ plus youth, where they typically offer arts and crafts, games, events, and education specifically to queer teens and preteens who don't otherwise have a space to be themselves and just have fun and learn. But the event got on the radar of notorious Canadian troll Chris Elston, aka Billboard Chris, who announced that he'd be protesting the event event with Moms for Liberty saying, quote, I'm going to Planned Parenthood's Rainbow Room Youth Indoctrination event in Doylestown, Pennsylvania on Wednesday evening. Some lovely Moms for Liberty will be joining me along with a journalist or two. Come join our party outside. He then adds, the Rainbow Room brings together 14-year-olds with 21-year-olds to teach all sorts of queer inclusive sex, groomer central. Now, what he's referring to here is sex education. Now, when it's taught in public schools, people think of it as sort of this awkward, albeit necessary, feature of public education to prevent unplanned pregnancies and reduce the transmission of diseases. It is necessary. But when queer youth are taught sex education, it's all of a sudden grooming, according to Billboard Chris. But that's just not true. A meta-analysis published in the Journal of Adolescent Health found that a comprehensive sex education that is LGBTQ plus inclusive actually helps to prevent child sexual abuse and offers a plethora of other benefits as well. But I mean, he knows that. And even if this event didn't offer sex education, he'd still call it grooming, right? If this was a drag queen story hour, he'd still say that it's grooming because we know that to these types of people, anytime a queer person is in the presence of children, they call that grooming. Or if LGBTQ plus youth gather for a space to have a queer prom or just get to know each other because maybe they don't fit in or they're bullied, they'll still call it grooming. So it doesn't matter what the situation is it's always by default grooming to them so me explaining this is really not necessary it's effectively superfluous information but to any viewers who don't know why sex education for youth including lgbtq plus youth is good now you know either way he showed up because he wanted to make a scene and as lgbtq nation reports elston showed up wearing a sandwich board that proclaimed children cannot consent to puberty blockers he also recorded his presence with a selfie stick asking others can anybody tell me why we should be cutting off the body parts of children so on one hand he's worried that this is a grooming event because they're teaching sex education to queer youth but on another hand he's going up and asking them why they're chopping off children's body parts seems like a very very good faith actor i'm obviously being sarcastic but i mean the goal i think it's evident he's there to antagonize people he's there to antagonize event goers he wants to intimidate them but fortunately his attempt to gin up outrage did not work in fact, it backfired tremendously because when he showed up to the event, he was met with a surprise. Newsbreak reports, Chris was met by a crowd of about 200 parents of LGBTQ youth, church parishioners, and members of the community. The counter protesters were standing on the lawn in front of the church, in the driveway, and on the sidewalk. Some were holding handmade signs of their own with messages like, we love you more than you hate us. In other words, the community was not going to tolerate this bigot showing up to intimidate queer youth who they realize need a space to be themselves to learn to you know be in community with other queer youth because maybe they don't feel as welcomed by their cis and straight peers they need this so the community to the tune of hundreds of people showed up and said we're not going to tolerate your intimidation and you love to see it because this dude he showed up with a couple of moms for liberty momsies so they were very much outnumbered it was like maybe 12 at maximum of their protesters, and then you add hundreds of counter protesters. And that is really encouraging to see. But him and his moms for Liberty cronies getting ratioed by counter protesters, it's not even the best part of the story. Because from Chris's perspective, hundreds of counter protesters showing up isn't necessarily the worst thing ever, considering the types of tactics that he uses to demonize and troll LGBTQ plus people and their allies. So he is essentially a real life troll and debate me bro who provokes people 
into giving him a reaction to which he can then broadcast to his audience on Twitter and say, look at how unhinged these LGBTQ plus people and their supporters are. So let me give you a couple of examples so you know who we're dealing with here. This man paid for a billboard in Vancouver, Canada, declaring his love for notorious transphobe and Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. He then wore that same slogan on a shirt to a Nicholas Sperling rally, who was a pro-LGBTQ plus politician in Canada. And he did this specifically to provoke the attendees and it worked. And on top of that, he uploaded a video of himself following a woman who cursed at him after he asked her an outrageous transphobic question. And he does this because the goal isn't necessarily to change minds, it's not to have a conversation or debate people, it's to get a reaction and then broadcast that reaction to people for views and clicks. That's the goal. So the prospect of 200 counter protesters showing up on its face isn't necessarily a bad thing for this type of a troll because he now has hundreds of people he can antagonize for propaganda purposes. And odds are at least a couple of them are going to be so outraged by the ridiculous things that he's saying that they're going to give him the propaganda fodder that he needs. But unfortunately for him, it did not go according to plan because the counter protesters all agreed to a really interesting, albeit genius, strategy. Newsbreak continues In a brief interview conducted on the street before he arrived at the church, Chris said his goal in traveling to Doylestown was to have conversations with members of the community. But as he approached the church, Chris was met with a wall of silence as nearly everyone in the crowd ignored him. Even when Chris got close to people and tried to start a conversation, he was largely ignored. Most people in the crowd treated Chris as if he wasn't there. Chris walked up and down the sidewalk holding a phone on a selfie stick to record his interactions. He loudly asked if anyone wanted to talk about the science of transgenderism, but there were no takers. Quote, can anybody tell me why we should be cutting off the body parts of children? Chris asked. A lot of you probably don't believe that's even happening, right? For the most part, the protester encountered a wall of silence and an occasional angry glare from the counter protesters. At previous appearances around the country, Chris has posted videos of people screaming at him and occasionally assaulting him. That may make for good video on the web for a provocateur, but the Doylestown crowd refused to engage. So they decided to not feed the troll, and that strategy was a massive success. And I'll tell you why the protesters themselves are saying that that strategy was successful in a moment. But first, I want to share their reasoning for this particular strategy. So one of the attendees was State Senator Steve Santisario, who represents Doylestown, and he also showed up with solid, in solidarity with uh, queer youth. And he was asked by a journalist about this particular strategy, and what he said was brilliant. He said, there was really no point in engaging with someone whose mind is already closed. And furthermore, he suggested that the community was already familiar with the tactics and the antics of Moms for Liberty. So engaging with any of these people was pointless because their goal of being there was not to argue with bigots and transphobes. The goal was to stand in solidarity with queer youth, and it worked. Now, I'll show you why it worked. So you're looking at a TikTok video uploaded by a Doylestown local, and they noted here that Moms for Liberty showed up to terrorize them. And as you can see, there's Billboard Chris right in the front wearing the light blue jacket. And one of the local momsies, Megan Brock, is also there. But then they cut to all of the counter protesters that showed up, and they talk about their strategy of just ignoring him as he walked around with a selfie stick trying to provoke a response from anyone but nobody would give him what he wanted. At one point, he even tried to talk to a dog since no humans would engage with him, but even the dog apparently wasn't interested either. And him being ignored resulted in him and his momsy friends going home since nobody would take the bait. Nobody. So that right there is why they say don't feed the trolls, because depriving them of the attention that they crave makes them go away. They win when you acknowledge their existence, but by not acknowledging them, by ignoring them, you are depriving them of the thing that they want the most, your attention. Again, they don't care about dialogue or debate. Their minds are closed. They just want to make you look silly, and it's impossible for them to do that if you simply ignore them. Now, I want to show you a longer video that he posted to Twitter himself, because you're going to see how disciplined all of these counter-protesters really were, because he basically talks to them sometimes for minutes at a time, but they ignore him.
and they just keep talking to each other and you can tell that they were just having a good time like one of the attendees said that they wanted it to feel like a festival on the street and you kind of get that vibe because people were having a good time despite his presence let's watch are you proud to have a conversation you're not wow it's incredible whether you believe in god or evolution and i'm sure everyone here being such a science crowd i'm sure they all believe in evolution but whether you believe in god or evolution this makes no sense if you believe in God, this ideology teaches that God made us wrong. And if you believe in evolution, this ideology is teaching that for the first time in human history, for the first time in 200,000 years, we need a pharmaceutical company to help our children be who they really are. Totally insane. Did y'all see the wheels turning their heads just now? Their brains started to break. They'll come around. Who wants to talk about the science here today? It was the medical bodies, after looking at the evidence, found that there was no evidence to support transitioning children. But none of you care about this, do you? You're totally fine with sterilizing autistic kids, kids who would grow up to be gay, cutting off their body parts. My gosh, we got a true, we got a true cult going on here. What about you, sir? Why do you think it's okay to sterilize kids? Yeah, you got nothing. Ladies, would you like to have a conversation today? Literally never. Literally never? Why? Why can't we talk about things? We can't talk about things? What's up with that? My gosh. Senator Santisario, why don't you want to have a conversation about the greatest child abuse scandal in modern medicine history? Why can't we talk about sterilizing kids? He's got nothing. Amazing. Now, towards the beginning of the clip, those two ladies that uh, he was talking to, they endured his diatribe for, it's got to be more than a minute, right? And I had to cut it down because it was so long. But if you watch the full clip, which I'll link to down below, they just sat there and they denied him the attention that he wanted. And it was brilliant. The willpower that these people have really needs to be commended because if somebody is up in your face with a camera, for me personally, it would be very difficult for me to not tell them to fuck off, right? But these people, they didn't bite. I mean, a couple of them were like, no, I don't want to talk to you. But I mean, as he continued to try to talk at them, they just ignored them. Now, there is, I think, a variety of ways to deal with anti-LGBTQ plus trolls. Uh, we recently talked about fascists who showed up to a Pride event to intimidate them, and they decided to troll them, and they challenged them to a push-up contest and beat them. I think humiliation is one strategy, but... With regard to these particular trolls, the counter protesters had the perfect strategy and they handled the situation, I, I think, ideally, in my opinion. Now, as I stated earlier, the community was already familiar with Moms for Liberty and they already know their MO, right? But I do want to play a speech from a parent from this community. Uh, and she made this speech a couple of days ago before that protest that we uh, just watched. And she basically explains the effect that Moms for Liberty's presence has had on their community and the atmosphere that they've cultivated and how they're finally coming together to push back. And this clip is a little bit lengthy. It's about three minutes, 30 seconds, but it is worth every single second. Moms for Liberty on our school boards and in our community have been coming after our children, our teachers and our schools for the last two years and while central bucks had always had a republican majority it wasn't until moms for liberty overthrew our district that our district began to make national headlines week after week and for nothing good their policies are responsible for over 70 book challenges and two book bans the forced removal of a quote by a holocaust survival eli wiesel the wasteful spending of over a million dollars, censorship of teachers, and an atmosphere of fear and retribution in our schools and classrooms. They are the reason Central Bucks is hemorrhaging some of the best educators around. In addition to their harmful policies, Moms for Liberty on our boards have done absolutely nothing to combat real issues affecting our students. They have ignored the mental health crisis affecting our youth. In fact, they have attempted to vilify social emotional learning and empathy as a concept. <laughs> they have 
done nothing about increased absenteeism and the rise in behavioral issues in our schools. In fact, they stand firmly against restorative practices because, well, it's CRT according to them. They have done nothing about, they have done nothing to decrease gun violence, bullying, and harassment in our schools. In fact, their policies cause an increase in bullying in our schools, specifically and especially from our most vulnerable youth. Students come to every school board meeting to tell them, to express to the school board how their policies have hurt them, and the school board majority ignores them every single time. They belittle them by insinuating that adults have put them up to this. So much so that students now begin their public comment with, by saying that their words are their words and no one has forced them to come there to speak. They have done absolutely nothing to help our students. Woo! I've been asked recently, how has this divisiveness affected my community? And my answer is simple. It's not divisiveness. The premise is wrong. There's no divisiveness in our community. There's far-right extremism attempting to rewrite history and erase marginalized groups, and that's Moms for Liberty. There's an effort to weaponize parenthood, and that's Moms for Liberty. There are those who want Christian nationalism in our public schools, and that's Moms for Liberty. There's extreme far-right propaganda machine that has infiltrated hearts and minds of moms, and they are Moms for Liberty. There's a fall battle cry of parental rights that really just means rights for some and only some, and that's Moms for Liberty. There's no divisiveness. In Central Box, Woo! Democrats, Republicans, and Independents are, are working together to push away the fascism breathing down our necks. So this community has been terrorized by this fascist group, Moms for Liberty, for years. And as a result, good people are starting to come together to fight back against these fascist momsies who have infiltrated their community. And not only that, they've brought in outside agitators, outside provocateurs like Billboard Chris to terrorize their own communities, as is the case in Doylestown. But... In other communities, they've brought in much more nefarious, militarized groups like the Proud Boys to disrupt school board meetings. So Moms for Liberty is organized fascism that has taken over many communities in this country, and it's largely gone unchecked up until this point. And this community in particular, they're demonstrating to other communities that you don't have to just sit back and take it. When you all come together together, you can drive out the fascists. And driving them away from events like this, it's easier than dismantling the hold that they have on school boards, for example. But I mean, the very first step is for the community as a whole to come together and say, enough is enough. We're not going to tolerate what they're doing. This is fascism, and we don't want it in our community. They are not welcome here. And it looks like this community, Doylestown, is starting to do that. Maybe they're going to be the first community to permanently remove this fascist tumor that is Moms for Liberty from their city. And if they can do that, then I hope that they'll be able to create a blueprint for other communities who are also dealing with the same thing. And, you know, there's going to be a point where Moms for Liberty is so ubiquitous with school board meetings and uh, and all of this that there's going to be blowback. And I think that we're reaching that moment where the blowback is happening because they've kind of just overplayed their hand and they've demonstrated that they don't actually have a concern for the children or the teachers. They just want fascism and authoritarian control. And I'm thankful that people are finally starting to recognize that this is what they're doing. So the faster that other communities wake up and do what Doylestown did, the better off we'll all be. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Wo